Right, good afternoon. Uh, happy Monday. Feels like we saw each other just a few days ago. Um, I just want to start off with a sad note that obviously the Secretary General was very saddened to hear of the passing of, the, of Prime Minister Ambrose Lamini of the Kingdom of Eswatini. He extends his deepest condolences to the people and the government of the country, and I expect a full and uh, more formal statement on that shortly. I have a trip announcement uh, for you. The Secretary General will travel on Wednesday to Berlin, where he will address the German Parliament on Friday morning. While in Berlin, he will also meet with Chancellor Angela Merkel, President Frank-Walter Steinmeier, and Foreign Minister Heiko Maas. He will be discussing various issues with them, including the pandemic, climate crisis, and international cooperation. Uh, and we will share in advance the, his remarks to the Bundestag uh, with you. I have a statement to share with you on Yemen and the anniversary of the Stockholm Agreement. Uh, today the, marks the second anniversary of the Stockholm Agreement, a diplomatic breakthrough that offers a glimmer of hope to an end to the devastating conflict in Yemen was at hand. Unfortunately, far more needs to be done to achieve that common goal, and the profound suffering of the Yemeni people has persisted. The Stockholm Agreement helped to avert a catastrophic military escalation at the time, thereby safeguarding the continued, although limited, functioning of the Red Sea ports and the entry of commercial goods to key and key humanitarian assistance on which millions of Yemenis depend to survive. The preservation of this lifeline is even more vital now as pockets of famine-like conditions have returned to Yemen and millions are facing severe, growing food insecurity, and particularly against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Secretary General calls on all member states to step up their financial support for the United Nations relief operations and to help address the severe economic crisis of the country. He calls on the parties to fulfill the commitments they assumed in Stockholm, including through full and unconditional participation in the Redeployment Coordination Committee and its related joint mechanisms, and the implementation of the terms of the ceasefire on the ground. It is crucial to avoid any action that would exacerbate the dire situation in Yemen. The Secretary General urges the parties to engage with his special envoy, Martin Griffiths, and that engagement in good faith. Only through dialogue will the Yemeni people, excuse me, only through dialogue will the Yemeni parties be able to agree on a nationwide ceasefire, economic and humanitarian confidence building measures to alleviate the suffering of the Yemeni people, as well as the resumption of an inclusive political process to reach a comprehensive negotiated settlement to end the conflict. And we will share that statement with you electronically as we speak. And also just want to flag that the head of the uh, UN mission in support of the Hodeida agreements and the chair of the Redeployment Coordination Committee, Lieutenant General uh, Abhijit Guha, is also calling for full implementation of the agreement and an end of suffering of the people of Yemen. Uh, both General Guha and um, Martin and uh, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lowcock, as well as Martin Griffiths, uh, briefed the Security Council this morning on Yemen in a closed uh, meeting. And on Ethiopia, our humanitarian colleagues continue to tell us of dire shortages of food, water, fuel, clash, uh, cash, and electricity, as well as telecommunication services and other vital supplies in the Tigray region. Yesterday, uh, we were told that the mobile network and the electrical power was reportedly restored in Tigray's capital, Mekele, and that is to be welcomed. Uh, and we reiterate our call for all basic services in the region to be restored indeed. As we've been telling you, the communications blackout has made it very difficult to verify information and to provide basic humanitarian services to those who need it the most. So far, more than 63,000 people have been recorded as internally displaced in Tigray, including some who fled uh, towards Afar and Amhara. We expect these numbers to change if access to the region is allowed. An interagency mission conducted between the 2nd and the 8th of December in Afar found that thousands of newly internally displaced people need water, sanitation and hygiene services, as well as medical supplies and care. 
We, as well as our humanitarian partners, continue to mobilize resources and personnel as we prepare to scale up assistance in Tigray as soon as humanitarian access is reestablished for the United Nations. We also continue to engage at the highest level with the federal government to work out operational details, including security conditions, to guarantee access. And UNHCR and its partners in Shire um, continue to coordinate the protection of refugees despite difficulties in accessing the camps, among others. Over the past month, our colleagues tell us that there's been an increased spread of misinformation on social media. We are working with the government of Ethiopia and others to rectify this. And turning to Nigeria, you will have seen that yesterday we issued a statement in which the Secretary General strongly condemned uh, the attack on December 11th on a secondary school in uh, Katsina State in Nigeria and the reported abduction of hundreds of boys by suspected armed bandits. The Secretary General calls for the immediate and unconditional release of the abducted children and, of course, their safe return to their families. He reiterates that attacks on schools and other educational facilities constitute a grave violation of human rights. He urges the Nigerian authorities to bring those responsible for this act to justice. And he, of course, reaffirms his solidarity with the government and the people of Nigeria in their fight against organized crime, violent extremism, and terrorism. For its part, the UN Children's Fund also expressed its concern about the violence and stressed that children should feel safe at home, in schools, and in their playgrounds at all times. They add that it stands with the families of the missing children and the community impacted by this horrifying event. And as you will recall, if you can recall back to Saturday, that uh, on that day, the Secretary General, along with the governments of the United Kingdom and France, co-convened the Climate Action Summit. The summit marked a major milestone on the road to next year's COP26 in Glasgow, in Scotland, in the United Kingdom. The Secretary General appealed to leaders worldwide to declare a state of climate emergency in their countries until carbon neutrality is reached. He also said, as we look ahead, the central objective of the UN for 2021 is to build a global coalition for carbon neutrality, for global net zero emissions of greenhouse gases in 2050. He added that there is a solid momentum behind net zero goal, and by early next year, countries representing two-thirds of global carbon dioxide emissions and 70% of the world economy will have made strong commitments to carbon neutrality. At the summit, 75 leaders from all continents outline new commitments, and you can find more details on each of these pledges on the summit's website. And turning to Timor Leste, I wanted to, I've been wanting to, meaning to give you an update on what we are doing on the ground to help address the pandemic. The UN team, led by the resident coordinator, Roy Trivedi, is helping on several fronts, including socioeconomic response and recovery efforts. With support from the Secretary General's Recover Better Fund, the UN has provided technical expertise and funding to ensure that the government's social cash transfer scheme reached the most vulnerable and marginalized people. Nearly 300,000 households were reached through this scheme, which represents approximately 94% of all low-income households in the country. The UN also brought in 13 women's groups and the only LGBTI rights organization in the country to monitor the scheme to ensure that the process is inclusive. Given the success of the initiative, authorities have also asked the UN for support in the development of longer-term national food policy assistance. Uh, and just to flag that tomorrow, uh, our guests will be the Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator Ramesh Rajasingham, who will join us uh, virtually to brief on his recent travels to Afghanistan. And I will leave it at that. And I will turn to you. Ebtisam. Uh, thank you, Steph. On uh, Yemen, um, so you um, talked about in your statement about the updates uh, of uh, what's happening with the Stockholm Agreement, but uh, could you say more on what it's uh, what do you what are you expecting and why it's not um, uh, happening? Like what's standing in your way? Well, uh, what is standing in our way uh, is the parties, all the parties involved agreeing on a nationwide ceasefire, on, on better access, humanitarian access. I think that, that's a question to ask the various uh, parties. Our efforts uh, on Hudeda through the support mission and more, uh, and, and 
more uh, so nationwide through the efforts of Mr. Griffiths have continued. Uh, Mr. Griffiths continues to be in constant touch uh, with the parties. Um, it's a labor that he is not uh, giving up on. I mean, we're seeing every day that is, which there is no agreement, uh, the suffering of the Yemeni people continues and, and increases in a very negative way. A follow up, or two follow ups on that. So, uh, but I mean, although all parties are talking about their agreement to the ceasefire, but they are actually not uh, um, um, translating this on the ground to. Uh, so, why not uh, um, name and shame after all these years and two years waiting and trying and just talking exactly to about uh, what's happening in the different parts? Look, I think we've been very clear about what is, uh, what, what is happening uh, and the impact of, on the ground of the lack of progress. It's a, it's, an, it's a very complex negotiations and you know, no party is uh, is guilt free, as in any of these uh, efforts. It's some, it's one party sometimes that moves more forward than the other, and then it's the flip side. So, the, you know, the the naming and shaming, I think, is not something that is uh, conducive to uh, to getting an agreement. Um, can I have a last one uh, on the humanitarian front? So there are some countries uh, that promise to pay their uh, share. Uh, and still didn't pay. First of all, if you have any updates, and what do you say to countries who uh, promise to um, uh, pay more for humanitarian assistance and they are not uh, paying? Thank you. Our message is clear, pay, cash. I mean, if you've pledged, turn those pledges into cash. If you haven't pledged, do so and turn those pledges into cash. Uh, the uh, the breakdown of uh, of the humanitarian appeal is on the OCHA website. I can send you the link, and you'll see it in in real time uh, where the money is, and sadly where the money is not. Okay, Mr. Sato. Thank you, Sufan. On Nigeria, so similar things uh, of which terrorists are kidnapping the children at school again and again. So. What does Secretary General think the root causes of these things uh, happens? And what can the uh, UN do for preventing that these things happen? Look, I think if you look at this particular incident from the information that we have, it seems that it's more tributal to armed criminal groups uh, than violent uh, than, than ex religious or violent extremists, uh, extremist groups. That really doesn't change the fact uh, that children have been abducted and that they need to be uh, released. Uh, we are there in support of the government uh, and the people of, of Nigeria on a, vi on a variety of socioeconomic issues. Um, they are, you know, the, the, the root causes are... The roots are deep and they're they're complicated. It is issues of of, uh, of um, humanitarian issues, issues of climate change, issues of governance, uh, and we are there with the Nigerian government to try to address all of them. Okay, uh, Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. Do you have any comment on today's decision by the U.S. to? Uh, remove Sudan from the list of countries sponsoring terrorism. Look, that's a bilateral issue between the U.S. and uh, Sudan. Obviously, anything that would, uh, that would make, uh, I think, Sudan's uh, place in the, the community of nations uh, easier, for them easier to function, uh, would be welcome. But that's really a bilateral issue. Okay, uh, Amanda, and then we'll go to Iftikhar. Um, can you provide a further update on Ethiopia, specifically on the U.S. efforts to deliver humanitarian aid? Sorry, on, on which I, I, I heard, on what country? On Ethiopia. On Ethiopia, sorry. Um, not much more than what I've said. Our, our discussions uh, with the government to, on how to operationalize uh, this, the agreements, uh, 
continuing. I think it's, it, it bears saying that it's somewhat frustrating, to say the least, that we've not been able to go in, that we've not been able to reach people that we know are in need. Uh, and again, uh, like in so many other places, uh, days wasted uh, by a lack of agreement, a lack of green light for us is just one more day of suffering for the people who need, uh, who need help. Okay, if Tikar and then Celia. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, following up uh, on questions on Yemen, uh, could you also update us on, the, on what's happening to that suffering anchor? Yes, we had uh, the last update that I had was that about a week ago we had a productive meeting with the de facto uh, authorities. We are still hoping to stick to our timeline of a late January, early February uh, on site uh, for that first critical mission. Celia. Stefan, about naming and shaming. What does the UN think about visits in Paris and getting the Legion of Honor when so many people are arrested, jailed, and killed? Look, uh, it's not for me to comment on, on the decisions uh, taken by the government to, to do this. What I can tell you is that we have expressed uh, at various times our concern about the shrinking uh, civic space in, uh, in Egypt. Um, and notably uh, arrests of human rights, uh, human rights defenders. Uh, but on what happened in Paris, that's, that's a question to address to, the, to other parties. Ibtissam, who's filling in for James today. <laughs> and then, then I'll go to Sylvian, yeah. Uh, a follow-up on uh, Sylvia's uh, question. Um, and Egypt and France uh, also, f I, if I'm not mistaken, France, uh, 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 they don't want anymore to connect the selling of weapons to human rights uh, um, violations in Egypt. So do you have a comment on that in general about uh, countries selling, Western countries selling weapons to uh, different countries that violate human rights, and specifically Egypt in this case? Look, uh, the global arms trade is huge business. Uh, and I think every country, whether from the global north, the global south, east or west, that sells weapons has to make uh, decisions uh, and has to face up responsibility uh, for these sales. And that applies to, to every uh, arms exporter. Uh, sorry, Silvian, and then we'll go to Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. Do you hear me, Stefan? I hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is uh, on Lebanon. Uh, French uh, Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian said uh, Lebanon's political and economic collapse was like the sinking of T Titanic, only without the music. How much the SG can help in preventing the Lebanese people to perish with this Titanic? Well, Please it, help us. It sounds like I should have invited the spokesperson for the Foreign Ministry of France to this briefing. Um, but on a on a on, 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 do something? listen, I think the the Secretary General, through his representative on the ground, the special coordinator Jan Kubish, has been very very clear uh, on our position on on Lebanon uh, for the need for reforms, for the need for a government that listens uh, to its people. Uh, the Secretary, the UN, is re represented as part of the international uh, support group. We will continue to work individually and through the group uh, to ensure that the people of Lebanon uh, do not sink. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Vakara. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, because I connected a little bit late, I don't know if you talked about it, but um, Iran executed, Iran executed uh, a journalist uh, this weekend, uh, Rulad Zam. 
So I would like to know, it was a dissident journalist captured, captured in uh, Iraq. So I would like to know the reaction of the Secretary General. And then I have uh, other two questions after you answer this. Uh, we've obviously seen the news, uh, the tragic news of the uh, the execution of Ruhol Azam. Uh, I think this execution goes this execution goes against two basic principles that the Secretary General holds dear. One is that he stands firmly against the use of the death penalty. Second, he stands firmly for freedom of the press. No journalist should be jailed, let alone executed, for just doing their job. Your second question. I can't hear. It was about the intervention. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Can you hear me? The second question is I already asked last week. It was about the international water in Libya and, and what is um, the position of the Secretary General about the fishermen, the, the, the Italian fishermen that were captured in this international water that Libya considered its own uh, not international water, but the international community considered international water. So if the UN considered those water international, if Italy, uh, if in case Italy uh, resolve in, in a force to try to rescue the, the fishermen, if it will be covered. It's, if it, this action will be uh, 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 under the umbrella of international law. Uh, a couple of things. One, I, I'm not going to comment on any hypothetical military operation. Second, the issue of the demarcation of maritime borders uh, between two nations is one uh, that has to be decided uh, bilaterally. Thirdly, I, permesso. Thirdly, uh, we are very much aware of this, uh, this very sad case of these Italian fishermen. Our mission on the ground is working with the authorities to try to resolve it in a positive manner. I'm not going to go ahead and speculate uh, and opine on where, uh, where they were caught. At this point, our focus is that these people should be freed. Okay, uh, Abdel Hamid, you had another question, and then I'll go to Gloria. Yeah, I have a follow-up question uh, on my previous question. And I have, uh, uh, it's a legal question. <clears throat> I want to know, uh, Stefan, if crimes committed during a certain ruthless regime is passed over to the new regime once the old, older regime is, is, uh, collapses, for example, do the crimes committed during the period of Ceausescu, Pinochet, Shah of Iran, Marcos, Batista, uh, and Omar al-Bashir, after they collapse, do these crimes transferred automatically to the new regime and they remain, uh, remain responsible for these crimes? Look, I, it's a very interesting legal question, which I'm clearly not qualified uh, to answer. What I will tell you, though, is that individuals will always carry with them uh, the accountability uh, for having committed uh, crimes, violent crimes, crimes against humanity, no matter what label you have. But on the issue of state's responsibility, uh, I would advise you to speak to a lawyer, which I am not. Um, OK, I don't see any. Oh. Okay, I don't see it. Okay, uh, Gloria, I think you had a question. Okay. Oh, and Maria, too. Sorry, Gloria and then Maria. Maria, too. Sorry, Gloria and then Maria. Uh, go ahead, Gloria. Uh, I am yeah. gonna, I'm shocked with the situation with Nigeria, with the escalating of the problems with the students. But this time, what's, what's unusual, it was boy. It wasn't girls. Before, for religious reasons, they claim they were more white. But what are they going to do with the boys? Are they trying to conscript them into their armies? Secondly, uh, it's a more affluent area that they kidnap from this time. It's not quite the areas they were attacking before. Is there a reason for all of this or a weakness in I mean, I, the current military protection? 
Uh, Gloria, I cannot speak to. Sorry, so, somebody's not muted because I'm getting some feedback. Okay, uh, Gloria, I clearly cannot speak to the motives of those people who committed this horrendous crime. What we do know, uh, what we what we've seen, is that this was apparently an armed criminal group and not a group of uh, religi- of extremists, uh, no matter how you, you characterize them. That being said, it remains a, a horrific, horrific uh, attack, and we want these boys to be freed immediately. Maria Krenova. Thank you. Um, about the uh, SG trip to Germany, um, so if I understood correctly, it's uh, his first personal trip since March, uh, right? His, his, and, first, his um, first official trip since March, yes. Uh, I don't know why I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Maria, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, it is his first official trip. As you may have recalled, he went home uh, twice uh, to see his family to Portugal. Yeah, so the question is um, uh, why is it so important to go to Germany, in particular, taking into account that uh, there are some uh, strict COVID measures um, in Germany right now? And uh, is it uh, like the sign of him going back to his uh, personal trips as? more usual and also um, about safety measures safety measures is going to take is he going by personal plane or is it flight? and if he's going to quarantine after his uh, arrival back to new york uh a couple of things um we may have uh, more travel to to announce uh i will tell you that uh, the way where travel is organized, safety is first and foremost. Uh, the Secretary General will be uh, tested before uh, before leaving, um, as will his delegation. This was a very important uh, invitation on behalf by the German government. It's uh, not every day that a Secretary General is invited to uh, uh, to address uh, the Bundestag. Um, so we've accepted. We've accepted the invitation. Uh, the Secretary General will, of course, follow uh, all regulations pertinent to the city and state of New York uh, upon return uh, when he is in New York. Um, did you ask me another question, or did I answer? I asked about the safety plane, how he travels, if it's not... Um, the, the Secretary General will... Uh, travel uh, travels commercially. We do not, uh, uh, we, as you know, very, very, very rarely do we uh, use uh, private uh, aviation. Okay. Uh, unless there are any other questions, uh, hasta la vista. Thank you.